quite a, a week. This was the. This, it's it's uncanny, uncanny, because this is exactly what I've been talking about since the first white knuckle report of 2023. I talked about the back test of the trend line. Looks like we have a successful trend line back test because look at this weekly candle. We had price closing at the highs of the week, and it kind of looks like that price was bouncing off of that trend line, kind of came back to double test that trend line, and then huge bounce up. This was a monstrously bullish candle. And look at the volume here. We have increasing positive volume as price rises. That is all good news. That is really making a strong case for this being that second higher low we were looking for. Now the self-fulfilling prophecy of basic trend analysis is really coming true here, right? You have higher low, then higher high. Looks like you're getting the second higher low. It, it does not get any more basic than that. And what I also talk about, that this is potentially turning into a wave three of three moment, right? If I'm just to remind you that this so far, looks like a five-wave impulse off of that October low. You have wave one. You have wave two. This is your pullback in December, wave two. This is all a wave three, right? You have your first pullback within wave three, right? So you have wave one here and wave two within wave three, and now you're looking like you're about to head into wave three. Three of three, which I will emphasize, that's where all the money is made. The big money is made here. And I would not be surprised if wave three of three takes us a hell of a lot higher than 435 on the SPY. I would expect this to be quite bullish just from like a technical analysis perspective here. Coming over the DXY here, what do we see? We see a red weekly candle and we see that price did not break above last week's high, right? So what does that tell you on the DXY? It tells you that downward pressure has now initiated. You got the expected bounce we were looking for. Very possible that we've seen the top of this bounce and we're about to continue lower. Very possible. But at the same time, you could make the argument that maybe DXY is finding some support at the 236. No coincidence that that's where Priced found a bottom, at least for this week. Very possible that there's some more continuation. Definitely. And that would mean some more downside pressure in the indices. So now you're getting that speculation. Who really knows? We don't need to know in this situation. But what we can say is that we're definitely looking bullish on the stock market. So it's like chicken or the egg situation. Is the DXY going to fall because the stock market is looking bullish? Or is the stock market going to fall because the DXY is catching a bounce? It's a chicken or the egg. We don't know. But all we can say is that money is starting to flow into equities increasingly aggressively. And that's what I'm getting from this bullish candle here. Let's just take a look over at crypto really quickly because we're still seeing that consolidation below the 200 week moving average. Very positive. We are seeing the 100 day moving average cross above the 200 here. So more bullish corroboration in the moving averages. I do want to point out the total market cap of crypto right now because that's telling a slightly different story than Bitcoin, literally simply just because it's above the 200-week moving average. It's holding above that. It looks like the 200-week moving average is holding a support at this time. Very bullish for the overall crypto market. We definitely see a bullish configuration with the moving averages. Obviously, an improvement would be to see the 100-day crossing above the 200-day, but that's like about to happen potentially. So that's all corroboration of positive price action at this point. If we go look at the NASDAQ too, it's another kind of situation where, look at this, NASDAQ had the trend line breakout. Looks like it tried to back test the trend line, didn't quite touch it. But you're definitely seeing a giant positive move off of that trend line back test because, once again, you had price closing at the highs of the week. That is highly, highly positive, right? That's what we want to see. So now the question becomes, why are prices rising? Especially, we're starting to see more narratives emerging that are bearish, scary narratives. So level one is like when people are bearish, 
you should be bullish, right? You know, I mean, you got to go against the majority. That's typically how these things work. I will point out one of the mechanisms by which the majority is wrong in the stock market, there's actually a very logical reason why it happens. It has everything to do with the options market. Basically, when you have a majority of people on one side of the trade, let's say the majority of people are on the short side of the trade, the market maker this is the individual who writes option contracts. So the market maker writes option contracts and sells those contracts, hoping to buy the contracts cheaper than they sold them for, okay? Wrap your head around that, rewind the video and listen to me say that like five times. The market maker writes contracts, sells those contracts, hoping to buy those contracts back at a lower price than they sold them, right? So if the market maker is selling puts, which are bearish option contracts, let's just say they're selling those puts for $100 a contract, the, the market maker wants the investors to sell those option contracts back to the market maker at a price that's lower than $100. So that's why the market maker is always moving the market in the opposite direction of the herd because that's how the market maker makes the most money. That's, that's why the house always wins. That's what it means to say that the house always wins in the market. The house is the market maker. The market maker is trying to make all of the investors look stupid because when he does that or she does that, then the market maker is making money. So even though it's cliche to say that the herd is always wrong, it's important to understand there is a specific mechanism by which the herd is always wrong. It's the option contracts market, right? So in a way, this is why it's surprising to see price bouncing so predictably at this trend line because I would have thought that the herd was gonna see this trend line, was going to expect the trend line bounce, but... Then you have to remember there's all this negative news and all these reasons why we're going to recession and all this bad news kind of stuff. So maybe people were paying more attention to the bad news than they were paying attention to this basic trend line back test situation. Market maker takes advantage, makes a whole bunch of money off of all those people who are bearish when we had every reason to be bullish. So I just want to point that out. It's it's important to realize that, you know, there's no accidents or coincidences. The market maker is working against the herd. That's very important to understand. All right, so now I want to get into more of a macro conversation regarding where I think prices are headed through the rest of 2023 into 2024 and potentially even through the 2020s, okay? So now I'm getting more speculative here, but I kind of want to just express my big picture view on what's going on. It has everything to do with inflation. So what I want to look at here is inflation, that's this orange line here, against the S&P 500. So this is another important overlay, you know, of the same level of importance as the federal funds rate overlay on the stock market. It's the same kind of idea. So just on the surface, let's go back to, you know, 2001, turn of millennium. What's the first thing you notice, right? Equity price is coming down. Inflation coming down. Then what happens? Inflation starts to rise. Equity prices rise. Yes, there's a pullback, but look, it's a higher low. Then what happens? Inflation peaks and equity prices fall, bottoming around the same time that inflation bottoms, okay? Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm gonna keep going, but you start to see where I'm going here. So inflation bottoms right here, July 2009, very close to the time that the equity market bottoms as well. Then what happens? Inflation starts to move to the upside, right? Now, it doesn't go to a straight line to the moon upside situation. In fact, there is a significant pullback right here around 2015. But I've talked about 2015. This is a very important time in the stock market. A lot of people thought the stock market was rolling over here. And this period of time right here was a very scary moment in the equity markets. A lot of people thought that the stock market was going to crash. Now, what happened next is inflation started to ramp back up and equity prices ramped back up, right? Now, obviously, inflation, once again, not going straight line to the moon situation, not like it was between 2000 and 2009, where it was a very consistent uptrend. This is what's important to notice here. Inflation takes a significant dip right at that 
March 2020 moment, right? Then what happens? Inflation starts to roar. Equity prices start to roar. Now, we all know why this happened. It's because of how much money was printed in this time. So what I'm trying to show you here is that inflation and equity prices have a positive correlation, generally speaking. Now, they do move ever so slightly out of phase, but I'm trying to go back to the most basic understanding that you could possibly have regarding inflation, which is the simple idea that inflation means prices rise. That's not limited to anything. All prices rise. It's not just your gas. It's not just your food. It's everything. It's everything you own. It's because the value of the dollar is going down, so everything denominated in that currency goes up in price. So what you have to understand is inflation is the mechanism by which prices rise. It's not why prices would fall. So when we're starting to hear, you know, fears of inflation are going to crash the stock market, realize how idiotic that is. That makes zero sense. Equity prices will not fall because of inflation. Literally, the fact that that is somehow like in the general narrative just shows how stupid they think we are. They think we're stupid if they want us to believe that prices are going to fall because of inflation. No, no, no. I'm telling you right now definitively that if inflation is going to sink its teeth into this economy even deeper, then I'm telling you that this bubble is nowhere near popping. In 2022 was a giant profit-taking year, and I think that the bubble is about to be blown up significantly more. So this is my macro opinion. I think inflation might be on a major tear because what happened here in March 2020 it was pretty important in terms of the amount of liquidity just pumped into the system. So when the Fed says we're sucking liquidity out of the system, remember, they can't just suck liquidity out of the system. Other people got their hands on that liquidity, right? The whales, you know, the smart investors, the people who understand how the economy actually works, they got their hands on that money. The Fed doesn't have all the money. They don't have the ability to suck out the money because they can't take money from the individuals who already have that money in their pocket. And if they're smart, probably under their mattress, like literally, side note, they tell you to not put your money under your mattress. You should probably put your money under your mattress, you know, but so all this to say, if we can make a fundamental argument for inflation to continue to rise, then you better believe Equity prices will rise. Cryptos will rise. Real estate will rise. Everything will rise. And that's kind of what I expect to see because look at this move here for inflation. This is a breakout. This is a monster breakout, a huge range breakout. You have a pullback. What do you think is going to happen next? You think this thing is just going to go back to where it came from? No. This looks like an impulse to me. This looks like the beginning of an impulse. This looks to me like we're about to see the most insane inflation like since the 70s or potentially in all of North American history. That is what I speculate is likely to happen. So what should you do in that situation? You got to think like a rich person. A rich person is trying to expose themselves to the upside of inflation. That means you need to own things because things go up in price in inflationary environments. So what can you own? Obviously cryptos, obviously equities, obviously real estate, obviously commodities, precious metals. I mean, you name it. They're all going to go up in price if this inflation move here is just the beginning of a larger move, which I do speculate it is. And I do speculate that the stock market will rise in this inflationary environment. Now, I want to draw attention back to our other very important overlay, the federal funds rate against the S&P 500, because I have another tinfoil hat theory that I think you should be aware of, because I'm certainly aware of it, and I'm certainly operating on this understanding, which is exactly what happened in 2008 and exactly what happened before March 2020. This is important to realize. The Federal Reserve started lowering interest rates before the market crashed, right? That's the same thing that happened before March 2020. 
the Federal Reserve started lowering interest rates before the market crashed. What is the implication here? I'm going to speculate that the Federal Reserve might know when the crashes are coming or they have the power to cause crashes. I don't know which of those it is, but if I'm looking at the data here, I don't think this is a coincidence. Definitely a chicken or the egg speculation when it comes to 2001, but in 2008, it's it's much, much clearer. You can clearly see that the Fed funds rate started coming down before the peak of the market and anticipated the crash that came later. That's exactly what happened in 2020. The Federal Reserve anticipated this crash. Rates started coming down well before the market crashed. I do not believe that is a coincidence. What I'm trying to tell you right now is that we shouldn't be worried that the market is going to crash until we start to see rates roll over. Now, even if they flatten, it's kind of the same thing that happened 2019 into 2020. If they flatten, there's definitely a situation where the market can continue to rise. You can have that sort of euphoric blow off top. That's exactly what happened in 2020. I speculate something similar is going to occur. But then when I go back to the inflation argument, I further speculate that if the market does have a euphoric blow off top because interest rates come down, I will speculate that because inflation will likely continue to rise because that liquidity is not going anywhere, you can't just destroy the liquidity, equity prices are likely going to continue to rise through this decade. And I'll go one further. I think that the end of this decade, yeah, 2029, yeah, that might be the end of it, right? Like, you know, a similar situation to the 1929 situation, you know, the good old centennial anniversary Great Depression situation. But what I'm saying is I think it's reasonable to speculate and sort of have a working understanding of what the 2020s could be defined as. They could be defined by a massive surge in inflation, which is a massive surge in in equity prices, real estate prices, crypto prices, everything prices. That's what I think you you need to keep in the back of your mind here. And you have to consider that even though this does look like a massive bubble and it looks like, you know, maybe that bubble came to an end, I do not think that. I definitely do not think this bubble came to an end. I think inflation is actually just getting started and inflation will affect equity prices, commodity prices, real estate prices, all that stuff to the upside, absolutely. And I'll just c- kind of corroborate that over here with what's going on with oil. Weekly chart on oil, right? So oil is kind of the turbo boosted commodity, you know, inflation play. If inflation is going to hit, you better believe oil is going to be aggressively affected. And if I look at the oil chart here, what I see is consolidation with a higher low I think it's possible that oil is about to rip and the whole energy play is about to rip. That is symptomatic of massive inflation. Do you realize how much money is made by governments and bureaucrats and rich aristocrats in the event that oil surges? That's like their number one business. They want it to surge, right? So once again, thinking like a rich person You should be expecting oil to surge if what I'm saying about inflation is true. And I really don't have any reason to believe that it's that I'm incorrect at this point. I think it makes sense that we saw this nice pullback in inflation. But to me, this is just a pullback. It's just a pullback. I think inflation is about to get more intense. And that means that a lot of money is about to be made on the upside. The other one, natural gas. So look what's going on with natural gas. I'm just pointing out energy costs right now because inflation, right? If inflation is about to take hold, you better believe energy is going back up. Look what's going on with natural gas here. Massive, massive decline. Now, you could speculate a whole lot of reasons why there was this decline. Could be unseasonably warm weather and low demand for natural gas. That's definitely one reason. The point is, right now, it looks like natural gas is about to surge That's aligned with what we're talking about, inflation. Energy costs are about to rise due to inflation. 
That's going to make a lot of people a lot of money. Yes, it's going to harm a lot of people as well, like the the normal working class, you know, middle class people who are going to pay the increased prices for natural gas just to heat their homes, you know. But it's it's realize, you know, think like a rich person. It's it's a business, right? So like you want to treat this as an opportunity to buy low, sell high. And I don't think it's coincidence that natural gas is catching a major bid at the moment where oil is also likely to catch a major bid and where inflation is about to hit really hard. So here's where it gets also weird and backwards and interesting is if inflation is about to hit hard and the next Federal Reserve meeting is when? March 21st, March 22nd. What do you think the Federal Reserve is going to do on that meeting? They're probably going to raise interest rates Higher than people expect. Maybe they're going to do a 50 basis points. So then what happens? What does the market do in the event that the Federal Reserve raises by 50 basis points? Well, this is the situation where March becomes an insanely volatile month. Insanely. Because what I see here is you have the bounce off the trend line. I think you're probably going to see follow through here. And that follow through is likely to last into the Federal Reserve meeting. Then the Federal Reserve comes out really hawkish because they're like, oh, inflation, inflation. Oh, we have to destroy demand. And they raise by 50 basis points. Then what happens? You get another higher low. Let me just draw it just to predict it because sometimes my predictions are decently accurate. Right? So let's go. We're going into, yeah, right around here. That's I overshot it a little bit. But then, right, there's your next higher low situation. So I do think that we're going to start to get all that, you know, fear of inflation talk and everyone's going to be afraid and they're going to be bearish. But the whole time that they're bearish, the stock market is going to be rising into that Federal Reserve meeting. Federal Reserve comes out hawkish, similar to what happened on this very candle. Federal Reserve comes out insanely hawkish. Markets get slammed back down. But I do believe in this case, we'll we'll set up a higher low because I think the market is in an uptrend right now. And the fundamental case is literally inflation. That's what I got for you guys. That's the white knuckle report for this week. I know I got deeply speculative and put on my tinfoil hat, but it's important for you guys to know this is important for me. So,